Hey everyone! My name is Naomi and I will be taking you through taking off roof wax. If you're new here, kindly subscribe and if you already subscribed, you're coming back to this channel, feel welcome, you're highly appreciated and just to add a notification to you all, in case you have any questions, just send them, just write them in the comment section and we shall be able to answer all your questions so that you can be able to be ready for all your exams and even if you're in the industry, you can be able to answer any question that you could have in your mind. So welcome back and let's get started whenever you're taking off roof works you'll be given a plan and a section the plan will be able to show you the roof plan from above and it will show you the dimensions of the house and the dimensions of the roof the direction the dimensions of the walls shall be shown in broken lines because from above you cannot be able to see the line the walls but you shall be able to see the outline of the roof the outline of the roof shall be able, you shall be able to tell whether it's a gable roof or a hipped roof. If the line at the center goes up to the end, that shows it's a gable roof. If it gets up to the middle, then we have some hips, some lengths, diagonal lengths going to the ends, that is a hipped roof. For today, we shall be doing the gable roof takeoff. So having the plan and we are given that the dimensions of the length are 16,000 and the width is 6,000 and we can see these are external dimensions and when we can we look at the section we can be able to see the parts of the roof let us go through them we can see the ridge cap at the top we can see the resin coat roofing sheets we can see the trusses at two meters center to center 100 by 50 king post 100 by 50 strut and ties 100 by 50 tie beam the rafters they are 50 100 by 50 millimeters common rafters at 2.1 center to center 2.0 meters to center to center 75 by 50 millimeters pilings at 1 meter center to center and 50 by 50 millimeters bar tents we have the gauge 150 millimeters half round rain water gutter and gauge 20 down pipe we have the 100 by 50 millimeters wall plate, 75 by 20 millimeters TNG boarding, and 150 by 25 millimeters fascia board. Then we can see the 200 millimeters thick SCB walls. So we can see also that the height of the house is 3000. And we can also see the downpipe, how it ends there. So once we have studied the plan, now we can be able to start the takeoff. Uh, when you are taking off the roof, we, are, we shall follow a certain procedure. We shall start with taking off the part of the roof. We shall start with the wall plate. The wall plate is that, uh, that uh, it's a timber that is lying on the wall, holding the roof towards the wall. It's usually tied with the wall. That's why it's called a wall plate. Then we have the rafters. The rafters, they are the parts that are sloping from the top of the roof on the truss. Every truss has rafters on both sides, sloping from the top to the eaves. We have the ceiling joints or tie beams. The tie beams are those that part down here, the way I can show you. Then we have the palings. The palings, they are those, those timber that the roof covering is lying on, on top of the rafter. On top of the rafter, there are palings running across the roof. So the roof covering usually lie on top of the palings. They are nailed to the palings. Then we have the ridge board. The ridge board is that part at the top there, where which holds the ridge cap to prevent uh, to 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 block that gap between the two sides of the roof. So the ridge board holds the ridge cap. Then we shall take off the ridge cap, which is at the top there to prevent the water from entering the house, but it runs on the, on the roof on both directions. Then we have the roof covering. The roof covering, for example, in this one, mostly they are the iron sheets or such, but on this diagram, we are told it's the 20 gauge resin coat roofing sheets. Then once we are done with the roof construction, we shall go to the uh, 
we have also looked at the ties and struts. The ties and struts, they are those uh, parts here in between the king post and they are lying on the tie beam. They're the ones I can show you, I'm showing you right now. Then we have the king post. The king post is that vertical, that, that vertical post from the top to the tie beam. So we go to the eaves and ridges. Uh, the first one, we have the fascia board. The fascia board is this part that I'm showing you that is usually when you look at the house, once you see the, sh the roof covering, down there we have a, a fascia board, a timber that you can see, mostly it's painted. Then we have the badge board. The difference between the badge board and the fascia board is that the badge board is on that side where we have the gable side the gable side of the roof the fissure board is on the other side where we, the water is running towards then we have the buttons and the bearers those ones are usually on the eaves parts this part that you can see here then we have the runners the runners are usually uh, nailed to on the wall to hold the 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 bat bearers then we have the true tongue and groove boarding TNG boarding on the eaves so uh-huh then we in water goods we can see the gutters we can see the holes for the down pipes which are on the gutter we can see the swan neck projection and we can see the shoe so we shall take off all those things that we can see begin by calculating the length of the wall plate in a gable roof the wall plate will be on the length side because the wall plate is that timber that is bending to the wall to hold the roof onto the wall so it will be on the length side then the water will run towards the length side the truss will be across the house on the wind side so uh, to calculate the length of the wall plates, we shall take the total length of the house on the side of the length. If the length of one side is 16,000, so what is the total length of the house? It's 16,000 times 2. We get 32,000. How many joints will the wall plate have? Because we need to calculate the number of joints because when you go to, to do the BQ, we need to account for the number of joints so that you can be able to account for the number, uh, how much it will cost. Because we need to buy that, that uh, wire for scuffing the joints. So we shall calculate the number of scuffed joints. We shall take, assuming one length of team by six meters, how many joints will we have? 32,000 divided by 6 meters, 4.35. So say 5 number. So we shall come and insert in the takeoff sheet 32 uh, meters, 100 by 50 millimeters wall plate bedded on C cement, sad, 1 is to 3 mortar. Then how many scuff joints on wall plate? 5 number. Okay. Then Go to calculating the number of trusses. How many trusses will this house have? So, uh, in the truss, in the in the section, we are told that trusses are at two meters center to center, and the length uh, we have said the trusses will be on the length side, and their span will be the width of the house. So, uh, the length of the house is sixteen thousand. The trusses will not be on the edge of the house. We shall leave an allowance of 50 on every side. They shouldn't be on the edges. So we shall leave an allowance of 50 on both sides. So uh, we shall subtract 50 on both sides of the length, which is 100. So the total span where we shall distribute the trusses will be 16,000 minus 100. It shall be 15,900. So if it's 15,900 and the spacing of the trusses is 2 meters from one truss to another, how many trusses will we have? We shall have 15,900 divided by 2,000 plus 1. It shall be 8.95. So if we have 9 trusses, in this case, how many rafters will we have? We said that the rafters are those sloping sides of the truss. 
So if we have nine trusses, we have how many principal rafters? Principal rafters, they are these main, uh, the rafters on the trusses. Then we have the common rafters. The common rafters do not usually have the struts and the ties, and mostly and the tie beam. They are just rafters running from the top of the roof towards the wall plate. So how many common rafters will we have? When we go to, to the section, we can see common rafters, they are at two meters spacing. So we shall take 15,900 divided by 2,000 and we shall get 7.95. That one we shall not have plus one because common rafters only come where between the principal rafters. So 15,900 divided by 2,000, we shall get 7.95. So say, eight common rafters. What is the span of the truss? The span of the truss will be on the wind side. So if the wind of the house is six meters, we shall take uh, six meters we less the walls because six meters is for the external walls. The truss usually lie on the wall plate. So we shall take six meters, we, we subtract two times 200, we get 5600. When we get 5600, 5, it shows from the internal, from the internal wall up to uh, the other internal wall. There is where we shall have the span of the truss. So it's 5600. What is the uh, length of the half of the span? So it shall be a half of 5600 is 2800. Why do we need half of the span? Because on the section part, we can see we are given half of the truss. And that one is the one that we shall use to calculate the struts and the ties and together with the length of the tie beam. So we needed to know from the internal wall, the end of the internal wall to the center of the truss, what is the length? And that is half of the span of the truss. So we shall be able to label our roof with h1 h2 uh, h3 and h4 so we shall calculate calculate the length of the rafter the king post the trust the strut and the tiles we shall draw a triangle like this one and label them h1 h2 h3 h4 h1 is the length of the rafter H4 is the length of the king post uh, from the king post plus the extension uh, from a certain extension. We have H2 is the length of the struts. The H3 is the length of the strut and H2 is the length of the time. So to calculate the length of H1, which is the rafter, we shall take we know the pitch of the roof. The pitch of the roof is 23 degrees. So we shall take cos 23. When you are using Sokatoa, cos is ka, meaning adjacent of a hypotenuse. So cos 23 will be adjacent when we are using the span of the truss. Uh, we shall take this. We shall take the span internally plus. Uh, the walls, which is 200, plus the eaves, which is 300. So we shall take uh, the span, which we had already seen half of the span was 2800. So 2800 plus 200 for the wall, 3000, plus 300 for the eaves shall be 3300. So, uh, for the using the uh, 3300, which is the span, half of the span, plus the walls, plus the eaves, it will form the bigger triangle, whose hypotenuse is the length of the rafters. Then the base is that this span that we are using, half span plus walls, plus the eaves, so that we can be able to calculate the length of the rafters. So if we are using an angle 23, cos 23 is equals to adjacent of a hypotenuse. 
adjacent we have 3300 hypotenuse the length of the rafters so the length of the rafters will be equal to 3300 over course 23 we shall get 3.85 3.585 meters so we go to h2 h2 is the length of the tie the length of the tie we it is forming also a triangle a right angle triangle whose pitch is 23 degrees and the base of that triangle is half of the span of the in, inner of the truss you know the truss is coming from one inner wall to the other inner wall so we had seen that the half of the span is 2800 so half of that half of the truss is forming the base of the triangle for h2 so uh, to calculate h2 we shall take uh, tan 23 is equals to tower opposite of adjacent opposite is h2 adjacent is 1400 so h2 over 1400 so h2 is equals to 1400 times tan 23 we get h2 is 0 0.594 meters now we want to find h3 h3 the length of the strut so the length of the strut we shall calculate using car cos car is adjacent over hypotenuse so if we have a pitch of 23 if you can see it's using this other triangle uh, whose height is h2 h3 is the hypotenuse so uh cos 23 is equals to adjacent 1400 over hypotenuse strat so it shall be equals to h3 is equals to 1400 over cos 23 so h three shall be 1.521 meters so we want now to find h4 h4 is the length of the uh, king post the length of the king post we shall use the triangle whose h4 is the height the base is 2800 so turn 23 tower opposite over adjacent h4 over 2800 so h4 which is the length of the king post will be equal to 1.189 meters so that one we have been able to calculate the length of the king post the rafters the struts and the tries so we shall go to filling it in the uh, takeoff sheet and we shall say the following is the number of timber roof with approximate span 560 millimeters by 1189 millimeters high including hoisting to 3300 meters millimeters above ground level so aha uh -huh, we shall note them down the principal rafters how many principal rafters did we have we had the number of principal rafters is equal to the number of trusses we had nine trusses and each truss has two principal rafters on each side so it shall be two times nine the length of the principal rafter we have already calculated it and it was on h1 and it was 3.585 so we record 3.59 so we go to common rafters the common rafters uh they are also 100 by 50 millimeters so we shall say d to common rafters how many are the number of the common rafters we found that there are eight so how many common rafters do we have we see that the common rafters just like the principal rafters are on both sides of the roof so they shall be two times eight the length is the length of the common rafter is equal to the one that of the principal rafter so it shall be 3.59 is the tie beam what is the length of the tie beam first of all how many tie beams do we have the number of tie beams is equal to the number of trusses how many trusses do we have nine so what is the length of the tie beam we had calculated uh, the length of the tie beam we shall okay let's calculate the length of the tie beam will be equals to half of the span of the truss plus the wall because the tie beam lies on the wall so the half of the span of the truss 
from the internal wall to another internal wall is 2800 half of span because the total span is 5600 half of that span is 2800 2800 plus the wall of 200 we shall be 3000 so what is the total length of the tie beam? It shall be 3,000, it's half. So the total, the full length is 3,000 times 2, we get 6,000. So it shall be 9, nine tie beams measuring 6 meters, 100 by 50 millimeters. On to the king post. The king post, uh, as you can see, uh, we have 9 trusses. Each truss has a king post. So if each truss has a king post and we have nine trusses, how many king posts do we have? There are nine. What is the length of the king post? The length of the king post is H4. H4, which we got 1.189. So when we are filling it, it's to two decimal places. So it shall be 1.19. 9 times 1.19 that is the total length of the king post in that house so 100 by 50 millimeters king post ties and struts how many trusses do we have nine each truss has how many ties two ties in each truss so how many trusses nine two times nine what is the length of one tie one tie is h2 h2 we got 0.594 so when we are filling it, it shall be 0 0.59. We go to struts. Struts. Each strut has two struts. Two struts on each strut, there are nine trusses. So what is the length of each strut? The length of each strut is H3. H3 we got 1.521. When you are filling it, it is 1.52. So it shall be 100 millimeters times 50 millimeters ties in struts. Let's go to palings. Palings, they are those uh, lengths of timber that lie on the rafters parallel to the length of the house holding the roof covering. So the roof covering is usually nailed to the palings. The palings are nailed to the rafters. So the length of the paling will be equal to the length of the house internally plus the length the thickness of the walls each side is 200 200 plus the eaves you see the palings will hold the roof covering and the roof covering goes up to the edges of the eaves so it shall be 16,000 plus 400 for the walls and 600 for the eaves so the total length will be 17,000 how many joints will the palings have scuffed joints 17,000 divided by 6 meters the length of each uh, length of padding minus 1. So uh, it shall be 17,000 divided by 6,000 minus 1, 1.833, say 2 joints. So we shall see. Uh, number of palings, they are. We want to calculate the number of palings now because we have calculated the length of the palings. The number of palings, the palings shall be distributed along the rafter and the rafter the length of it we got it on h1 h1 was 3.585 so the length of the rafter is that 585 how many palings do we have the spacing of the palings is 1000 so it shall be that 585 divided by 1000 plus 1 it shall be equal to 4.585 say 5 palings on each rafter so uh, the total length of the palings will be, we have five palings on each rafter. We have two rafters on each truss, so it shall be two times five. The length of the palin is 17.00, 75 by 50 millimeters palin. How many scarf joints on the palings? We have two, five palings on each side of the roof, two sides of the roof, two times five times the number of joints on each piling two joints so it shall be two times five two times five times two point zero staff joints on palings we go to the ridge board the ridge board is that timber at the topmost part of the of the of the king post that one is where the ridge cap is usually nailed 
some people use two palings instead of a ridge board but in this case we have a ridge board so what is the length of the ridge board the length of the ridge board is equal to the length of the paling so if the paling was 17 meters the ridge board will be 17 meters how many scarfed joints on the ridge board if the paling head was 16 17 meters and it had two joints and the ridge board is 17 meters how many joints will it have, to have? two joints so two scarfed joints on the ridge board. So let's go to the roof covering. The roof covering is the rain's coat roofing sheet. That information we have got from the section. So the roof covering will lie on the paling, on the paling, on the length side, and on the rafter on the wind side. So we shall take the length of the raft paling times the length of the rafter times two because it's a gable roof. The length of the paling is 17 meters. The length of the rafter is 3.59. So what is the total area of the roof covering? It's 2 times 17.00 3.59. 28 gauge 28 gauge rainscot roofing sheet laid on 75 by 50 millimeters timber pilings at 1000 millimeters center to center. So what is the length of the ridge cap? The ridge cap will be equal to the length of the ridge board so it is 17 meters so 17 to 50 millimeters half round ridge cap then we have to fill in the ends of the ridge cap with cement and sand mortar how many ends do we have on the ridge cap they are on each end so there are two ends good so we shall write two fill in ends of ridge cap in cement sand ratio one is two three mortar we go to the end is end Verges. So we shall start with the fascia board. The fascia board is that uh, timber that is usually mostly decorative on the length side of the house. So it will on this section you are told it's 150 by 25 millimeters rod fascia board in one labor, and we shall apply coats of of gloss paint on it. So, uh, what is the length of the fascia board? The fascia board will be equal to the length of the palings. So, it's the, the, le the length of the palings is 17. 17 we multiply by the two sides. So, it shall be 2 times 17, 150 times 25 millimeters rod fascia board in one labor and KPS, 3 coats of GS timber, 100 by 200 millimeters. Let's go to the badge board. The badge board is like the fascia board, but it's on the wind side where we have the uh, gable roof. So on the gable side, we, we also have that, that timber that's like a fascia board. It's called a badge board. So that one will be equal to the length of the rafters because it's a sloping one. So uh, the length of the rafter equals the length of the badge boards. How many badge boards do we have? We have two on each side. Then we have two sides of the gable roof. So it's 2 times 2 times 3.59. 150 times 25 millimeters rod badge board in one labor. NKPS, 3 coats of gloss paint on GS timber, 100 by 200 millimeters guard externally so we go to the bearers the bearers are on the on the on the outside of the house so uh, the length of the house is 16,000 so we shall add the walls because 16,000 is the internal length so plus 2 times 200 we have added the wall to get the external length of the house is 16,400 so how many joints do will we have we shall take the total length of the house on both sides. So 2 times 16, 400. We shall get 32, 800. 32, 800, we shall divide by the, ta the, the, the length of each bearer. Each bearer will be 6 meters. So we shall take 32, 800 divided by 6,000 minus 1. We shall get 4.47, say, 4 joints when we round off. So we can see that the bearers, they lie on the external length of the house. They are nailed to the external length of the house. So, um, go to 
putting it in the take of shade. So we shall have two whose length is 16.40. Then on the side of the of the gable roof, we shall have two whose length is 3.59. The bearers will measure uh, equal to the length of the rafters on the wind side, but they will measure the length of the house on the length side. I hope that is noted. The bearers will measure equal to the length of the house on the length side because they are parallel to the length of the house. But on the wind side, the bearers are parallel to the rafters. So they'll be equal to the length of the rafters. So we shall have two times the length of the house, including the wall, 16.40. Then we have two times the length of the rafters on the side of the wind, 3.59. 50 by 50 millimeters bearers to walls. So how many scarf joints on the bearers? We calculated they were four. So we go to the runners. What is the length of the bearers? The length of the bearers was 32,800. So we shall add the length of the bearers on the wind side. The wind side, it was two bearers on each side of the truss, uh, we multiply by two sides of the gable roof, we multiply by the length of the, the length, the length of the rafters, which is 3285, we get 14, 340. So that one is you, the perimeter of the house on, on the side of the bearers, where the bearers are. We go to the length of the house, both sides, plus the length of the rafters on both sides of the truss at the gable times two gables. So we shall get 47, 140. The length of the of each length of the runner is six meters. So we shall get 47, 140 divided by six meters minus one we get 79.57. So it shall we shall get say 80 number joints. So we key it in in the table to record about the runners. The runners measure 50 by 50 millimeters runners. How many runners? 80. What is the length of the uh, the width of the runners because the runners are equal to the eaves of the house. So if the eaves are 300 millimeters, the runners are 300 millimeters. So the length is 0 0.30. We go to the T and G boarding to soffit of eaves and verges. The T and G boarding is usually calculated in terms of area. We shall check the area of the runners and bearers on all the eaves. So we start with the length side. The length of the runners is 16.40. Of the bearers is 16.40. The width of the bearers is 0 0.3. So, and there are two sides of the houses, so we multiply by two. We go to the wind side. The wind side, we shall calculate uh, using the length of the rafters. How many rafters do we have on the wind side? They are four, two on each side. So four times the length of the, um, the length of the rafters, because that one will be equal to the length of the bearers, 3.59, then we multiply by 0 0.30, which is the length of the runners. So which it is recorded to 75 by 20 millimeters TNG boarding to soffits of eaves and verges and apply three coats of loose paints on uh, GS of timber externally. Now we shall proceed to the rainwater goods. For the rainwater goods, we shall begin with the downpipe. What is the height of the downpipe? The downpipe, we shall take first the height of the house is 3000. We shall less 300 for the gutter because it's taking some height. We are left with 2700. Then we shall less that slant height that we can see. Now we shall less it vertically. Vertically, if we measure it on the drawing, it's 400. 
So then we add the flow bed because it's the downpipe is so long, it's passing this flow bed and going another hundred. So the thickness of the flow bed is two hundred. Then we add a hundred, which is below the flower bed. So the total we shall get is twenty six hundred. Then we shall add that projection, that slant height. The slant height. Uh huh. We subtracted the vertical to the slant height. Now we are adding the slant height. That slant uh, projection is 500. So the total is the total length for the downpipe will be 3100. So we shall record we have four downpipes. If you count them from the uh, plan, we have four downpipes. They are measuring 3.10, 100 millimeters diameter gauge, 28. Uh huh fixed to wall with approved brackets at approximately 1,000 millimeters with cement center to center and apply gloss paints on average 100 millimeters diameter externally. Proceed to the extra over for the projection 300 millimeters long and detail for sure. So, uh, how many shoes do we have? Each downpipe has a shoe. So, uh, that shoe is, is has a projection of 300 millimeters. So, we shall record four downpipes and each downpipe has a shoe one. So, we go to 150 millimeters diameter 28 gauge half round rainwater gutter and prepare three coats of loose oil paint and on GS of metal, 200 to 300 millimeters gut internally. So, how many gutters do we have? The gutter is calculated in terms of length. You know, the gutter is going round the house on the length side. You know, the gutter is where the water collects so that it is directed to the downpipe. And it's only found on the length side. So, uh, how many, what is the length of the length of the house? What is the length of the house? 17 meters. We mod, Adding the eaves and the walls. Then we have two sides of the length. So, it's 2 by 17. Okay. Uh, uh, extra over gutter for stopped ends and detail for forming a hundred millimeters diameter outlet hole for downpipe. So each each place where we have a downpipe we shall form a hole and it will cost us. So we have to take it off. So how many uh, downpipes do we have? We have two downpipes on two sides of the house. So it's two by two. Extra over gutter for stopped ends and detail for forming a hundred millimeters diameter outlet hole for downpipe. So there we have come to the end of the takeoff for a gable roof. In case you have any other question or you have, want any clarification, kindly write it in the comment section. And even if you have a question, just put, post it there. I'll be looking at them and I want to really uh, be answering your questions. So kindly the most asked questions I start with that one as we proceed So in case you have any topic that you would want us to discuss Kindly write it there if you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe and if you have liked this video Please give it a thumbs up and let's continue watching and enlightening ourselves. Thanks for watching